Hi, this is Chrissy again for part three of Return to Intimacy as a part of the Return and Reunion curriculum uh, for sailors. So we just talked about how to accept some of the change, realizing that change is constant. And then the next thing I wanna talk about is communicating and managing expectations. So the, one of the best ways we can start is by initiating with some general open-ended questions and, and, uh, and flow of conversation. But everyone is going to have an idea of what a homecoming and what a reunion will look like. Now, I like to ask the question, how long is the reintegration process? Now, Fleet and Family has research-based evidence to show that the reintegration process usually takes six weeks. So if you have six weeks after you have returned where things still feel rocky, unusual, um, I don't feel like things are the way they should be. That is a normal process with the reintegration process. Um, that doesn't mean that if you're in a volatile situation or a violent situation that that is normal because that is not. We need to reach out for a family advocacy program at that point. Um, but if things, if there's more tension than normal, if uh, there's more arguing than you expected, um, that would be normal because we're everyone's experiencing a different situation. Um, so realize that not every reunion is exactly the same and that everyone adjusts in different ways. So if you've experienced many of these before, you might say, hey, I remember feeling this way before. It's going to be fine. But other people who haven't experienced it will just say, wow, why are we fighting like this? I spent all of these months missing this person and why are they suddenly so hostile to me? One of the reasons could be because they have had to grow and change and they've had to take on much more than they expected as, um, as a significant other at home and gone through COVID-19, which, which is a big change. Um, and then the service member comes home and then feels like, well, they don't need me. They've just moved on. They're doing other things now. And that's just not the case. So reaching out and having those um, conversations can be really helpful. And consider having a mediator if things start to feel um, much more rocky than you would like to see. Just having another third person to bounce ideas off of, have a counselor um, during coronavirus. Focus is still doing telefocus, so that's resiliency training through um, licensed counselors. Fleet and Family has counseling available through their um, virtual services. And then reach out to Military One Source because there's some other organizations that they can refer to for um, virtual counseling. Um, and then expect that there's an adjustment period. Time, there is a certain period of time that needs to pass before change is usually um, normalized and accepted. And that many things will be different. So it's just Expect that with your physical surroundings, the way you communicate, maybe the way uh, your significant other has been since this um, situation. Now, restoring intimacy. Um, another thing that I wanna use as a phrase to kind of bridge restoring intimacy with other change that you might be experiencing is this is another powerful phrase that I like for um, service members who are kind of ready to start initiating something, whatever it is, change, um, a trip, uh, maybe letting children go to childcare, something like that. If not now, when? And that is meant to be, I understand that you're not comfortable with this, but when do you think you will be comfortable with whatever it is that, that would help for us to have a better relationship? Um, so that's another thing too. Like, um, I'm thinking mostly of, so say that I am somebody who's always been a little worried about getting sick. Maybe I have an underlying health concern. Maybe I've had a family member who has died from an illness. And I am experiencing a greater sense of uncertainty and a heightened um, anxiety because of this current global climate. And situations have changed and now it's time for us to go visit family um, because the country has opened up or something to the effect. Um, but I'm still stuck. I'm still in that place where I'm scared and I'm worried and I'm terrified. So instead of saying it's over, get over it, I don't understand what the big deal is, think too, maybe saying, well, okay, if not now, when? When do you think you'll be ready? When do you think that you'll be there at that point? 
um, you as a service member um, are kind of coming from a petri dish of a bunch of different people that are interacting constantly. So if I have been spending a lot of time trying to sanitize and keep my, my spaces very um, safe for me, and you're coming in with all of the additional germs that you have, this might set some people off and make them very uncomfortable. So have the conversation about how we can move forward and how that would be most comfortable for the person who's experiencing anxiety or um, some uncertainty with the change of you coming back and how you can best um, manage that. Does that mean that I come into the garage, I strip down, I make sure that I have all of the work clothes, they go straight into the washing machine. Does that mean that I need to uh, stay in another part of the home for a certain period of time? Have those conversations beforehand and just realize that this is an unusual situation, that we will all get through it together and that we will come out on the other end better. So if not now, when and open communication okay so when we talk about restoring intimacy we're talking a little bit about emotional intimacy but also physical intimacy um, it would be completely normal for someone to have a general feeling of this is awkward um, it doesn't feel like what I thought um, has anyone ever heard that there's a phrase from Mad Men I know I'm dating myself because Mad Men isn't new anymore um, where it's an advertising agency and one of the advertising executives says, what's the difference between a sailor coming off of a ship and a spouse coming home for dinner at five? And the answer is about 5,000 volts. So there are some benefits to this lifestyle. We kind of get to have the feeling of rejoining again, kind of the heightened emotions of seeing someone who you love and who you respect. Um, but it doesn't always translate every, in every area of intimacy. So just consider that that is um, normal. It's not unusual to feel like things are awkward when you come back, okay? Think about what you first did when you fell in love. Go back to some of those things that you need. If you have a um, significant other who just is not feeling comfortable opening themselves up yet. Think about some small areas of physical contact that we can have, maybe just by watching a movie together, um, maybe just by sharing a blanket, things like this that can kind of open up those flows. Um, always say that you love and appreciate and show gratitude for what that person has done during these times. Um, any feelings, frustrations, anxieties, again, that open communication will just facilitate more flow of intimacy. And then feel like you um, need to take time to, that it's okay to talk about your feelings. And I'm actually a big proponent of this, okay? And that actually goes so far into scheduling. So I have three kids, I have a full-time job. Some people are infinitely more busy than I am. So I will frequently get to the end of the day and be at, at bottom level. I can't function anymore at the end of the day. So think too about different times you could prioritize physical intimacy. Um, we could do, it, do that at different times during the day. It might be difficult if you're on a night shift and I'm working a day shift, but consider too that scheduling that is not necessarily a bad thing. That could actually work for certain types of couples, okay? And uh, don't be ashamed. Say, you know, I, for example, I can tell myself that I work out every day but in reality, if I don't put that on my schedule, if I don't put my clothes on at a certain time, if I don't make sure I don't have um, that my distractions are behind me, if I, don't, if I don't schedule that into my regular daily routine, it's just not going to happen. And that's the case, I think, for a lot of people. So prioritize that. Prioritize your intimacy. Don't be afraid to talk about physical intimacy. As awkward as it may be, it can actually um, maybe even improve things. All right? So that's it. See you for the next one.